We bought our house about, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. And the house was originally built in the early 90s. So the entire house was, well, very ugly when we bought it because nobody had ever thought to update it since the early 90s to when we bought it in the mid 2000s. So I've spent the last 12 years slowly remodeling the house room by room by room and I pretty much have the entire house done except for one little room the laundry room and I've been putting it off because well it was the worst room in the entire house if you don't believe me just look at this Well, let's rip this thing apart. Naturally, when I'm gonna do any sort of demolition work, I bring in the big guns. The foreman came in with hammer in hand and he started, well, he started whacking. I'm not sure he was doing a whole lot, but you never argue with the foreman. While he tried to disassemble the cabinets, I cleaned out the last little bits and bobs and started taking off all the cabinet doors. Well, almost all the cabinet doors. The foreman had a little art project going on. I eventually convinced him to relinquish his art project, and he actually used the drill for something useful. Taking the last screws out on the last hinges on the last door. With that door gone, I could grab my favorite demolition tool, this splitting maul, and really start demolishing these old 90s cabinets. I mean, they're practically begging to be removed. They literally started falling apart as I was removing them. Pretty soon I had all the bigger pieces of this large cabinet unit disassembled and it was time to do a little bit of sweeping. Unfortunately, I still had my shoes on, so we can't call this sweeping in my socks. If you know, you know. After removing the large cabinet unit, I moved on to the smaller cabinet unit. And this time I tried to be as ginger with it as possible, you know, really give it the old finesse treatment. I mean, I tried. I didn't say I was successful at it. I also forgot there was a light attached to the bottom of this and I smashed it against the faucet and broke the bulb. But, I mean, I'm taking it all out anyways, who really cares? Pretty soon I had the upper cabinet smashed to pieces and I moved on to the lower cabinet. And then it was time to answer a question that I've had ever since we moved into this house. What is in this soffit up here? I was hoping it was completely empty and I could just remove it all together. But of course, that would have made my life way too easy and I quickly discovered that there is a heating vent, run, chase, duct, whatever the heck you wanna call it, in this soffit and it needed to stay right where it was. Since we were taking the time to redo the laundry room, we decided to upgrade our washer and dryer and move it from the one wall to the other wall. Where the washer and dryer was, I had some plumbing done so that we can put a nice big mud sink right there. And then we're gonna center this cute little pendant light above it. My wife's idea, not mine. Now time to get rid of all this pink. Now I could have patched all the walls and painted, but that sounded like an awful lot of work. And why spend the time to fix a problem when you can just cover it up with shiplap? Am I right? Well, in this case, I think I am. Now, before I started hanging the shiplap, I took a stud finder, I located all my studs, and I drew a nice vertical line with my level so that as I worked my way up the wall with the shiplap, I knew I was anchoring each board into a stud and not just loosey-goosey into the drywall. At some point, the foreman found the sharpie and decided to draw a little mural on the wall. At first, I thought it was really cute. Oh, he's drawing his name. But then in true nine-year-old fashion, he had to add the word poop. My wife tried to remedy the situation by writing, Mom loves Ivor. And then she added the word more 
down below. And then I tried to remedy the situation even further by taking the Sharpie from her and then drawing an arrow from mom loves over to the word poop. Because let's face it, I'm still a nine year old at heart as well. And then finally my son decided to remedy the situation even farther and write Ivor loves mom and dad more. And then I just had to correct him and say false because there's no way he can love us more than I love him. Aww. Ooh. Okay, whatever with the mushy stuff, let's get on to shiplap. Now, believe it or not, I have not installed very much shiplap in my life. So I didn't know if there was a right or wrong way to do it. I just started at the bottom and started working towards the ceiling. Seemed simple enough. It was nice that I didn't have to go all the way to that far wall on the left hand side because there's going to be cabinets there so I didn't really even have to cut the boards. I just did full 10 foot lengths and once I got done with that wall I moved over to the other wall and once I got done with that wall well I moved over to the other wall and well I think you get the picture. Eventually I shiplapped the entire space and it was time to start building cabinets. Now, whenever I'm doing cabinet layout for a room, I like to design everything on the computer first so that there's no surprises when I get into the building. So these are the cabinets that I roughly designed for that little corner in the laundry room. So into the shop, I went to start ripping down some pre-finished birch ply. I always like to use pre-finished ply whenever possible when it comes to building cabinets because there is nothing worse than trying to apply finish on the inside of a cabinet box. I mean, it's pretty terrible. But if you buy pre-finished ply, in this case pre-finished birch, well, once you put the whole box together, it's already finished on the inside and you can just move on to the fun stuff. Which in cabinet building isn't really that fun, it's more just the the next stuff because it's all kind of repetitive anyways one of the first cabinets i decided to start building was the corner cabinet box now this is also a new thing for me i've never done a lazy susan in a set of cabinets before but i didn't think it could be that hard so i just started cutting things and drawing things and kind of making it up as i went now, if you don't know what a Lazy Susan is, I'm not surprised. I don't even know if there's still a thing that's in popularity, but my wife specifically wanted one to store all of her detergents and bleaches and soaps. Not to say that they're hers in the sense that we have a traditional 50s style sexist marriage. She just likes detergent. So get off my back. I'm not trying to put my wife in her place. She legitimately likes detergent. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that before I get canceled. Now, essentially, this lazy Susan is going to sit in this giant void made up by the 90 degree corner of the cabinets, which means I have to build that cabinet in a little bit of a different way because it's got to support a lot of weight and house the lazy Susan. Speaking of lazy Susan, I got online and ordered one off Amazon. I don't know if this is a good one. I mean, it got good reviews. I'll put a link in the video description if you want your own Lazy Susan. Or maybe you know a girl named Susan who happens to be lazy and you could invite her over to just sit in your cupboard all the time and hand you things. I mean, that could work too. But for my specific cabinet, I decided not to go with a person in the cabinet and rather this metal thing I ordered on Amazon. Once I had the top and bottom section of my Lazy Susan cabinet cut out, I started cutting out the plywood for the sides. Now I'm going full three quarter inch sides and back because like I mentioned, it's gotta support a lot of weight because I'm creating quite a large void. To hook these cabinets together, I'm just using a countersink bit and some two inch long screws. Just do a little zip zap zoop with the countersink bit and then just added a screw. Three or four per side, should be plenty strong. I didn't even add any glue. When it comes to building carcasses like these, really the only thing you have to worry about is what does it look like on the inside, because you're not going to see the outside of the cabinet at all. So all those screws that I'm slapping in there, yeah, doesn't matter, and that exposed plywood on the front, well I'm going to cover that all up with a face frame. So once I had the sides attached to the bottom, all I had to do was insert the top, and now I have this giant L-shaped box. Wow. I am a very good woodworker. I have created a box. 
With my box done, it was time to try and figure out how to get this lazy Susan device inserted into the cabinet. Now if you're like, hold on Jason, it would have been kind of nice if you spent a little more time on exactly how you built this box and where you got this Lazy Susan hardware and how you got it all marked out and how you installed it. Well, don't worry. I actually filmed this in way more detail, but I'll put out another video just on Lazy Susans some point in the future. For now, all you really need to know is, ooh, Lazy Susan installed. Next. Next, it was on to our other cabinet boxes. And after that Lazy Susan one, these ones are pretty simple. I'm basically gonna make these the way that I make all of my other cabinet boxes. It's a method that has worked for me and I've slowly kind of refined it over years of building box after box after box. It's quick, it's simple, and it's incredibly strong. Basically, you have a bottom, two sides, some sort of back, and a bunch of supports in between. And if you want more detail than that, I actually just put out a three-part cabinet build series all in one, and you can learn all about exactly how I construct these boxes. It really is a foolproof method. I mean, it's impossible to make any mistakes while constructing these, except when I added this front brace piece on, and then I remembered, oh yeah, there's gonna be a farmhouse sink right there. I don't want a brace piece, so. I mean, maybe it is possible still to make mistakes with this method, but it's it's still pretty darn easy, and it's nothing a multi-tool and some reverse drive and the impact driver won't fix. Am I right? Anyways, pretty soon I had my second box in my cabinet cohort complete, and I went and set it on the floor next to Susan, who I can vouch is very lazy. She was just sitting there. Then it was just another square rectangle-ish box to go on the other side of Susan. Got that one done pretty quick. Now you might be asking, why does that one have a back on it and the other one didn't? Well, the other one's gonna be under the sink and I just thought it was easier to leave the back off than try and cut around the you know, water valves and the plumbing pipes. Cause I'm lazy and it's my house so I can do what I want. Finally, my last box was this corner cabinet unit. And as you can see, it's got a nice angle on the back of it. So this one's gonna be a little trickier. I started just by cutting the rough shape of my cabinet base, cut off that angle with the track saw, and now I'm gonna have to piece the sides on, but I'm gonna have to cut the sides at an angle so that as I piece them on, it's kind of this nice wrap around the outside of the cabinet. I decided to build the entire sides of this with three quarter inch ply as well. That way I just don't have to worry about it being all flimsy and floppy and adding support in random places. Pretty soon I had all the sides screwed on and cut to the correct angles. As you can see, it looks nice on the inside and that's all that matters. And with that, our last cabinet box for this section of cabinets was put together. So I set it on the floor and you could really see how this whole thing is starting to take shape. I mean, other than the fact that it does seem to be just a little low, doesn't it? But don't worry, I'm gonna raise it up. You know, raise it up for your toesies so you can kick, do the toe kick. I'm trying to tell you guys I'm, I'm gonna build the toe kicks now to go underneath them and that, that'll raise them up. So all you people that were like, man, those cabinets look pretty low. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Well, you just, you just needed to keep watching the video because I'm just about to prove you wrong. I'm gonna raise them all up. Now you could spend a lot of time trying to make your toe kicks look super pretty or you could just slap them together as quick as you possibly can because it's not gonna matter at all. Nobody's gonna see them. I mean, they're gonna be shoved under a cabinet, and I always put a nice thin layer of quarter inch MDF on top of my toe kicks that I can paint and then stick in place afterwards, so I'm serious. Don't spend very much time on these. Just get them the right size and shape, get them hooked together, and move on to the next step. I mean, I even went against my own rules and I started screwing them together, and then I was like, this is stupid screws. Who am I, Bob Vila? I could use screws to hook a toe kick together. So then I just grabbed the 16 gauge nailer and was like, 
bing, bang, bam. Thank you, kind lady. And uh, I had my first toe kick assembled and ready to install. So I carried it over and set it on top of my cabinet because I thought I would be different and put the toe kick up there. You know, change things up. Actually, I was just making sure it was the right size because the top of the cabinet's the same size as the bottom and I was too lazy to lift them up and shove it under there. I mean, I don't need to do that yet. Then I took measurements for the other toe kick on the other side and as you can see, I just slapped that together, eyeballing all my measurements. They're not spaced evenly, but who cares? And set that one on top. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Next, it was time to go into the laundry room and install those toe kicks on the floor. And by that, I mean literally just set them in place. This is why I love doing the toe kicks separate from the cabinets, because you can just drop the toe kicks in, make sure they're all perfectly level without worrying about your individual boxes. And if they're level, all you gotta do is set your cabinet boxes on top. It's that easy. And can I tell you another secret? I don't even attach the cabinet boxes to the toe kicks because they can't go anywhere. There's heavy cabinets sitting on top of them. So if you think you need to attach the boxes to the toe kicks, go right ahead. But I'd like to see somebody get down on their hands and knees and try and pull that toe kick out from under the cabinets after you screw the cabinet boxes to the wall. I'm guessing it'd be pretty hard. Now it's always a little nerve wracking building cabinets in the shop based off of measurements on a computer screen because when it comes time to actually install the boxes in the space, you're always wondering if they're actually going to fit. And this was no different. So I got my far right box in, I popped Susan in her final resting place, and now the moment of truth. The one box that could ruin everything. The infamous middle box. Oh? Huh? No. See, I wasn't even worried. I mean, I knew the whole time it was going to fit. Word to the wise, when you're taking your measurements for your cabinet boxes, always leave at least a quarter inch wiggle room on either side. That way you're not going to be struggling to fit the boxes in place. You can always trim that gap with a face frame after your boxes are installed. Next, I brought in the final box that's also going to hold the sink. I had to do a little operation on some existing trim to make the box fit, but that wasn't too big of a deal. Just a little zip zap zoop and easy peasy lemon squeezy, that box just slid in easy. Darn it, I used easy twice in that same rhyming sentence. That was a rookie rhyming mistake, and I am ashamed. Anyways, with all the boxes set in place, now I just had to screw the boxes to each other to make one giant, cohesive, rigid, super box. Then once all the boxes were hooked together and I made sure that everything was nice and level, both side to side and front to back, then all I had to do was attach the boxes to the walls directly into the studs, and now these cabinets are rock solid and aren't going anywhere. Ooh, ah creepy. With all of my carcasses installed in the laundry room, it was time to start working on face frames. Now, the material I use for face frames varies depending on where the cabinet is going to go. For a kitchen, I will always use something hard like hard maple, sometimes birch, but really, I pretty much stick to maple. But for living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, I usually go with poplar because it's less of a high traffic area, poplar paints great, and it's a lot cheaper. When it came to the laundry room, I went back and forth. Do I do maple because it's more durable? Do I do poplar because it's cheaper and easy to paint? And I finally went with poplar because, let's be honest, I mean, a laundry room's not that high of a traffic area. It's not like people are doing acrobatic dancing in there or waving around sabers. I'm sure this poplar will be just fine. To start things out, I cut the rail for the right side of my cabinet box, made sure that was a very nice tight fit, and I clamped it in place. Then using a pencil, I marked where all my little dividers needed to be to extend down. These would be my styles, and then those will attach into my bottom rail. 
Then I cut an identical rail piece and using my top rail piece with all the markings on it, I just transferred those markings from the top piece to the bottom piece. Then I cut some styles, the correct length, and I went over to my workbench and I added some pocket holes so that I can attach everything together nice and easy. Because I'm all about easy, especially when the projects are from my own home. Then all I had to do was slap all of my styles in place in between my two rails, make sure they all lined up on those little marks that I added with my pencil, and, you know, just smear a little glue on there, add some pocket screws, and my face frame was, well, essentially done for that side of the cabinet. You want to take your time getting the face frame together, making sure everything's level and all lined up because it's going to save you on the sanding later. You also want to make sure that your face frame is as square as it can possibly be, especially if you're doing inset cabinet doors and drawer faces because it will make installing your doors and drawer faces much easier, which in this case, that's what I'm doing, inset cabinet doors and drawer faces. Anyways, with my face frame all assembled for the right side of the cabinet, I carried it into the laundry room and give it a little tap tap here and a tap tap there. and. Everything seemed to be fitting very nice and snug. Now the edge of this cabinet box is the only side of the cabinet that's exposed. And as you can see right now, it's just pre-finished plywood, which number one, isn't gonna paint very well. And number two, just isn't gonna look that exciting. So I wanted to fancy it up a little bit. So back into the shop where I took one of my face frame pieces and I cut a harsh 45 degree angle on one edge. And then I made this nice little grid pattern that I'm going to hook together just like I would a face frame. And I'm going to inset some quarter inch MDF in each one of those panels to give it more of a cased look and really, you know, up the feel in the laundry room. People will be like, ooh, look at this gorgeous cased end of this cabinet. How elegant, how sumptuous. Is sumptuous a word or did I just make that up? Mm, sounds right. Whatever. Anyways, with my frame all put together, I decided to add a little rabbit on the back side so I could recess that quarter inch MDF. And that's when I realized that the rabbit bit I had was too big and it was going to hit all those pocket screws. But it was also a really old rabbiting bit, so I was like, whatever. I'm just going to eat through all these pocket screws because that just seems like the lazy thing to do. And that's kind of the theme of this project so far. So I literally hit every single one of those pocket screws with that router bit and completely ate into the side of the screw. But I got it done and now I get to go buy a new rabbiting bit. So that's fun. Next, I cut my quarter inch MDF panels. I added a little glue and I tacked them in place with a 23 gauge pin nailer and this whole decorative panel thing was all put together and looking pretty nice. That'll class up the end of that cabinet. So after giving it a light hand sanding, I carried it back into the laundry room and I set it on the side of the cabinet box. And at first I didn't realize that, um, yeah, holy cow, this thing is way too big. What the heck happened? I mean, it's not just like a little too big. This is a full six inches too big. I just completely just messed up and somehow got my measurements all cattywampus. So back into the shop where I got to punch out those quarter inch MDF panels. Lucky for me, the glue wasn't dry yet. And then I had to figure out how to cut this entire thing down to be about six inches shorter. I started off by just going over to the table saw and running the entire frame through the table saw very carefully. I didn't want to twist this thing and get a nasty kickback. So go slow and don't do this if you're not comfortable. A track saw might have been the better bet, but I managed to get it done in the end. Then I went to remove all those pocket screws, and this is when I realized that that would have been pretty easy, but I hit every single one of those pocket screws with the dumb router, and I sheared off the end of them. So now I can't back them out with the impact driver. So then I had to get creative and kind of like partially cut through them, partially wiggle them out with a pair of pliers, and 
It was a total pain in the butt, but I did manage to get it done eventually. Then I had to re-drill out some pocket holes on each one of those rails. And once I had all the pocket holes drilled out, then I could reattach the style on the side. And then I had to cut down the quarter inch MDF panels to size and then reinsert those with some more glue and then re-tack them in place with a 23 gauge pen nailer. Whew. All because I got one lousy measurement wrong. Woodworking is a cruel mistress. On the upside, I do get to purchase a new rabbiting bit. And there's one at Bits and Bits that I've had my eye on for a while. So that's good news. The other good news is that this time that panel fit perfectly on the end of the cabinet. So I whipped up the face frame for the other section of cabinet, tested to make sure it fit, which it did. And then it was time to glue and tack everything in place. Now, some people might be wondering why I'm just tacking the face frame on and I didn't use pocket screws so that there wasn't any exposed holes on the front of the cabinet. And the reason is that this way is so much faster. And I'm gonna paint the entire thing, I'm gonna fill those holes, I'm gonna sand it in place. So you really, you just, you're not gonna see the holes. It doesn't matter, just do it this way, it's quicker. No one's gonna know, no one's, no one's gonna know. I also went against my normal rule of using Thixo to glue on the face frame because it doesn't run all over the place and I just use regular wood glue, which worked, but it did run all over the place and I had to wipe a bunch up off the tile floor. So maybe next time I'll just make the long journey back out to the shop to get the bottle of Total Boat Thixo. But for now, wood glue, it'll, it'll work. I added some wood glue to the back of this panel, but to be honest, glue just doesn't stick to that pre-finished ply very well, so it's really going to be the brad nails that are holding this thing together. I got my mitered seam on the end there, nice and tight with some glue, and yeah, that's going to look pretty good once it's all painted up. Then the last thing I had to do was add a nice little shelf in the middle of the cabinet that my farmhouse sink can set on top of so that it's really nice and supported. I already took the measurements from my farmhouse sink and my face frame should be exactly the right size for it to slide down in there. So I just had to level that shelf up with my face frame. I added some little strips of wood underneath those little runners for the shelf to sit on, screwed them in place, and then Craig helped me carry the farmhouse sink into the laundry room and we crossed our fingers that it would fit because, I mean, at this point, everything's already installed, so if it doesn't, well, that'll be the whole side panel situation all over again. On a side note, why are farmhouse sinks so stinking heavy? I mean, we live in 2024. Can't you make these things out of PVC or something? Anyways, I'm very happy to report that the sink fit perfect. For once on this project, I was finally able to read a tape measure correctly. After a quick little check with the level to make sure that the sink was perfectly even with the top of our cabinets, which it was, I could happily say that all of our cabinet carcasses, face frames, everything were completely finished for this section of the laundry room. We actually have a lot more cabinets to build that I haven't told you about yet because, well, I haven't designed them yet. But don't worry, that'll be in part two, or three, or four. I'm pretending to wash my hands. Hey, so uh, yeah, we did a thing. That wasn't bad progress for a couple days work. Well, I mean, that was just the cabinets. It was really like five weekends to get this all demolished and the shiplap up and the electrical rerun and the plumbing rerouted and then get everything painted. But we're getting there. We'll have a laundry room eventually. Next, we need to build the countertops, or rather install the countertops. We're doing butcher block. We are gonna do a standalone video all about butcher block countertops, how to install them, what you should finish them with, some different things you wanna think about if you're gonna do butcher block. So stay tuned for that video coming out in the next couple weeks. And then, I would like to say that we're done building cabinets, but once we get the butcher block installed, we're gonna set more cabinets on top of them. So, yeah. You're going to be building cabinets for a while. 
If you're not signed up for our Patreon, check the link in the video description. There's a bunch of stuff happening over there that you're missing out on. Behind the scenes footage, there's a YouTube Live every Monday. You get special access to all of our plans and products before anybody else does. So yeah, right down there. Go check it out. I'm just gonna be over here pretending to wash my hands. Forgot a pretend towel. Hey, are you guys aware of the latest scoop? All the happenings in the Bourbon Moth shop? Well, if you're not signed up for our email list, you probably aren't. That's right, we've got an email list, and the cool thing is, because we have a Squarespace website, it makes creating an email list, like, insanely easy. We have almost 8,000 people on our email list, and we didn't even have to do anything to get those people, because it's automatically set up on our website. When you go there, you can just click, I wanna be part of the email list. That's what I love about Squarespace. They also make it insanely easy to create an online store. So if you go to squarespace.com slash bourbonmothwoodworking, you're gonna get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And you can create a website just like ours. Like if you go to our website, bourbonmoth.com, which is a Squarespace website, you can buy t-shirts, you can buy hats, and one of the things I love is they make it super easy to offer digital products. So like all of our plans are available on our website, you just add them to a cart, and then they're just automatically emailed to you. That means we save on shipping, we save on paper, help the environment out, and you get a good set of plans right to your inbox, which is pretty cool. Also, let's say we wanted to sell some stuff in person and some stuff online, but we don't wanna to have to deal with the hassle of managing our inventory on our online and then our inventory in person. Well, if we use a Square card reader and we hook it up to our Squarespace account, it automatically updates all the inventory for us. I'm telling you guys, this whole Squarespace thing, they're onto something. They make creating a professional looking website insanely simple and you don't even have to be a web designer. So, like I said, if you want to try it, go to squarespace.com slash bourbonmothwoodworking and you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All you gotta do is use coupon code bourbonmothwoodworking. Just click the link down in the video description.